You can do that. There we go. Hi, Katie. Hi, Megan. Thanks How are so you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. <laughs> We've been kind of ships in the night in New York like a year ago. We kept yeah. passing each other, and we had the same Pilates teacher for, for a while. And yeah, that, I feel and, like I'd like wave to you as you looked <laughs> by. I know. And I kept being like, oh, we got to get coffee, and we never did. But here we are. We can have coffee while we're have coffee. sheltering in place. Uh, quarantine life, hashtag. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, mm. um, you know, I follow you on Instagram is how I've kept in touch with you all these years. But yeah. when did you get into the company in relation to me? Like, were you my brother's generation? Uh, yes, I was at SAB with Robbie. Uh-huh. And he got in, I think, the year before I did. We did. We both did Western and Workshop. And then I think he got his apprenticeship, and then I was the following year. I got in in 2006. So, okay. Yeah. Um, and then, because you had been in, how long, when did you get in? I forget. You were, co- you were a couple years old. I was an me, apprentice right? in 2001. So, okay. like five years before you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But I really yeah. didn't realize, because, you know, you get so busy in your own world, I didn't realize how fast you were doing things. Like, you were doing soloist roles at how early 18 19 17 17? I did Juliet at, I did Juliet at 17 yeah oh so you're <laughs> yeah. part of the young crew like throw you in the deep end good luck kind yeah. of deal yeah, yeah. just so people know he, when, yeah. when Peter Martins did Romeo and Juliet like mm-hmm. the first cast was my brother and Sterling Hiltine and they were a little bit more like established maybe a little older yeah. and then everyone else was really straight from the school it, it was. What happened was, I think, I was pulled in later when Sterling was pulled in. Same with Tyler Peck. And so the three of us came in when he kind of shifted things around, and I ended up with Seth Orza. Tyler was with Sean Swazi, and then obviously Sterling was with Robbie. That, but that's like, a great partner when you're young and new to have Seth Orza. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we did Carousel, too, together that year. So, uh-huh. cool. yeah. Cool. Yeah. So that was like the real beginning for you at New York City mm-hmm. Ballet. Mm-hmm. And yeah, then- and it was, it was nuts. I, it's stressful, right? I had some stressful oh early God. beginnings myself too. I mean, it's it sounds fun from the outside, and I think it sounds really impressive, and people get excited, They're like wow. Mm-hmm. And you're like, no, it's not easy. No. Like I said to Peter once, you know, that's that's really hard to deal with. It's almost like a punishment. I, I feel bad saying that, but but you're to be so quickly not the underdog and to be thrown into this place of yeah, exactly. It's a lot of pressure. And I think for me, too, I, I, I'm one of those people that, like, I felt guilty about it in a way. Because, like, all the older, you know, the ball, older ballerinas have been waiting to do the role. Or, right. Because the first time I did it was when Yvonne went out and I did Sean's balcony. That right. was the first time I did it. Right. And I felt guilty about it. So I was just Romeo like, and sorry. Juliet has really been a defining ballet yeah. in your career. Yeah. I've yeah. done three versions. Uh-huh. Different points. Yeah. It's funny. So. Everyone has kind of their thing. For me, it was Coppelia, which was this, oh yeah, like, You're like, like very first thing. And it's you know yeah. when it's something you start with, you kind of like mm-hmm. keep it close to your heart for the rest of of your yeah. dancing years. So because I had I did did it with multiple Romeos too. I did it with Sean Swazi, and I did it, Robbie and I did it for uh-huh. two shows. Oh, that's fun. So, yeah, because Sean went out, and the, like I think we had like four hours notice, and they were like, "Here's the tape. Go in a studio, figure it out." And we we're like, "Okay, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah." No, that was my that was my valley. But I remember being one of your friends in Capella. Yeah. And like that's your role. I mean, it was amazing. <laughs> it was amazing. So what yeah. other big roles did you feel you put you know, you were thrust into in those early um, years that you remember really well? Sugar Plum, for uh-huh. sure. I did that my second nutcracker at nineteen. Um Me and too. I did I think we we you and I both did it backwards. I did Sugar Plum and then, then I do drop. drop. Me too. Yeah. Um and then Aurora. Uh-huh. Yeah. I mean, that's huge. That, oh <laughs> that one was like, shoot me now. Like, it's just, I remember Meryl coaching me and working with her like every single day. I don't know if she coached you too, Meryl and yes, Sean, but did. it's just like, oh my gosh, so hard. Yeah. So stressful. Yeah. You totally know what that first, ex- those first years for me was a Meryl, Sean, mm-hmm. Meryl, Ashley, Sean Lavery experience. And n- not everyone knows exactly like what that was like back then, but you know, mm-hmm. it was a lot of pressure and, and they were great, but it was, it was intense. It was very intense, especially Meryl. Cause she's wonderful to work with and she's always happy, but like every detail, every finger, every, everything. Like I remember both she and Sean working on just the entrance for sure. Plum. We spent like 20 minutes on it one day, just yeah. walking to the front. And I was just like, oh. <laughs> like 
uh, I can't do I this. I know exactly how you feel. I had that for um, for Sleeping Beauty for Coppelia with her for theme and variations. Oh my gosh. Um, I feel like that's another one of your ballets, this theme. Like I, I have been, been doing it a lot. Course. Yeah. 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 So, okay. So then, then you have some health issues. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I only kind of saw what it was like from afar. And I've seen you talk a little bit about it. Um, yeah. like on your YouTube channel or on the Today Show even, but but let everybody know that doesn't know what kind of happened for you. It was right after Beauty, actually, because Beauty was winter season of 2010. And how and old were you? 21. Uh-huh. Um, and spring season of 2010, Peter was doing Mirage, that other, be- the, the oh, Calatrava, yeah. remember the Calatrava Festival? Oh, yeah. yeah. Which I ended up doing with Robbie, actually. Um I start, we were in the rehearsal room six hours a day with him and I started putting on weight, just like create, like I would have had to have been sitting on the couch doing nothing but eating right. for weeks. But instead um, you were standing and I working. was standing and, and then we were on every night, um, yeah. just, you know, and I remember my hair falling out and just being, I could not get through rehearsal. I would be like standing in the back, like, like doing this, mm-hmm, just, it was mm-hmm. so weird. And I thought, well, maybe it's cause I had a really hard season with beauty and everything, but it just didn't make a lot of sense. And so a couple of months went by and I, we found out it was my thyroid, which is the little gland right here that controls everything. And it was basically non-functioning. And so I thought, well, I'll just get on medication and get back in the company and it'll be fine. Right. Cut to two like years it's later. It's nice when you think you find the solution. Mm. You're like, I just got to do these things and it'll get better. Yeah. Because that's what they said to me. They're like, oh, it's just underactive. Take the medicine. You'll be fine. Right. I was like, Fantastic. Um, two years later, I'm still in the company. They're still casting me in ballets, but I, I cannot fit in the costume. I cannot get through. I was miserable. That's a horrible so finally, feeling. Oh, it was, it was just, and then, you know, going down to the costume shop and then p- trying on the costumes and it being like this far from closing. And you're just like, I, I don't know what to do. I had that experience so, when I was pregnant. <laughs> oh, did you? See, that's a happy reason. <laughs> that's true. That's like, oh, yay. But, um, Peter finally cast me as Hermia in Midsummer. And, you know, she has that, like, eight-hour-long solo. And he came to rehearsal, and he sat down, and he watched, and he said nothing. And he said, let's go talk. Wait, talk you mean eight-minute eight, eight minute long solo? Yeah, I mean, no, I'm exaggerating. Oh. But, like, you know, <laughs> you know Hermia, you know that, da 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 she runs out, and you know, the whole thing? Right. Um, but, yeah, it's about, I think, I think it's actually about four minutes, but it feels like eight hours. Yeah. But I could, I couldn't get through it, obviously. And he, he brought me into his office and he's like, so how are you feeling? You know, you, you've been struggling for the past couple of years. I want to know how you're feeling. And I lost it. I was like, Peter, I cannot do this anymore. I hate ballet. I hate looking at myself. I can't, I haven't been on stage in two years. I'm done. Like, I just need to stop and go get well. And he gave me a huge hug and said, I knew you were smart. He was like, I really feel for you on this. If I could just keep you around for years and assure you, you know, it'd be fine. But I said, no, because I don't want to feel like I owe the company anything, you know, that guilt of like, they're still paying me. They're still paying me. So I just, I left. Right. And the, the pressure of feeling like you need to add to the, to, to mm-hmm. produce something, to add to the collective effort. Cause already for two years, the majority of that two years I was not on stage, they were paying me uh-huh. and I wasn't performing and I just, I felt so guilty, but I just was not in that kind of shape. So I went home and I thought, well, now I'll get better and I'll be, go back. It'll be great. Three years later, I'm still as miserable as I was. And finally we figured out that on top of the thyroid problem, I have an autoimmune condition which is where your body essentially attacks they're like my in my particular case my thyroid is like attacking any hormone it produces so no matter how much medication i was on it wasn't working right so and it's just there are other things that come with hashimotos i will have it for the rest of my life your immune system is compromised um, you know just random things your energy level are you level- scared a little bit during this pandemic a little bit i mean i've taken extra precautions um and i was about two weeks ago i was sick i had the the nose and the cough and the whole thing i did not have a fever so i don't know if i ended up having it or not this was still early on i don't think people we weren't even under quarantine yet but so there is that um and i will never be as i've said many times the thinnest one in the room i mean i just there's only a certain amount of weight i can lose because my body is just like you're not going to be your skinny self. Is Hashimoto's uh, a hereditary disease? It could possibly be, but I'm adopted. So I don't have medical history. So how does, is, how does that play into your, like, emotions with this? Feeling like, wondering what you're, 
you know, genetics are that that are passed down. Do you feel like if you had no had had a knowledge of the medical Maybe. history of your parents, would you feel kind of like I don't know, different in some way? About I would have been more prepared. I mean, and the other the other thing is this typically hits women when they're in their in their forties, and I was twenty one. So yeah, so it was really early. Wow, was I didn't really know that. Early. Yeah, they usually discover it. I would say around the late thirties, early forties. Um, so a typical professional athlete, 21 year old, yeah. you know, that's not what happens. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the emotional side is another big part of it because I was looking at myself and I hated myself and I just hated about Like I couldn't take company class after a while. I was just like, I can't be judged. Cause you know, we constantly scrutinize ourselves and the ballet masters scrutinize you. Right. So it was just like this ongoing, like battle. If you're, if you're not had. feeling good walking to that room with oh, a no. mirror there and everybody else there is not fun. Mm-mm. Yeah, Mm-mm. I hear you. So, um, but it was during this whole process that's when I started YouTube and started sort of the other side of what right. I do now. Right. So, so then now, now you're with Miami City Ballet. What was the mm-hmm. gap? How many years was that in between there? Well, since I'd been on stage, it was nine. But technically, in a company was seven. Because for those two years at City Ballet, I didn't perform. Right, so, right. Seven. And so how did you come into the YouTube experience? I think you started with like makeup tutorials, right? Mm-hmm. Because it was right here. <laughs> I didn't have to show, <laughs> I didn't have to show the rest of me. I didn't have to be in a leotard. It was fine. So I was like, I can do this. And I had learned from Michael Avon on all my crazy stage makeup. So right. it was like, I can do this. And I'm um, amazed though how dif- how many different techniques and looks you have. Like I learned from, um, so everyone knows Michael Avedon was the makeup man in our in our hair and makeup room when we both started in the company, and mm-hmm. um, he he really wanted us to look glamorous, and he would go out front and he would have binoculars and make sure the color and everything looked looked perfect on our makeup. But I have like one version of my makeup. Like, <laughs> how did you come up with? You're well, just talented with that stuff. I guess. I have the eye for it, and I always have loved makeup. That's like a hobby of mine. And he actually, that first Saratoga that I was doing, Sean's Juliet, um, I think they put me on for Bizet Fourth Movement, Symphony C Fourth Movement, and like Run On Western. So I had a lot of free time. So Michael was just like, why don't you just come in here and we'll play? So cool. for the nights I wasn't on, we played. And then he did my makeup for Juliet, and that's when he taught me to use the purple. And then he did my makeup for Sugar Plum, and he taught me how to use, like, other colors. So he, I really learned it a lot from him. I think he did, did that for all of us, but you were listening. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it was fun. Yeah. I just, I enjoyed it. And it was something, too, about getting ready. Like, that's part of my, like, therapeutic yeah. getting ready for the show process. Yeah. So I just, I loved it. And so, um, but yeah, that's where I started on YouTube. And then I started into the, you know, gradually into the technique tips and then in the classes and um, that spawned the whole thing. But that was really why. And the other reason I did YouTube was to to let people know what had happened because the rumors had started that I was fired and I was not fired. So I wanted to make sure everybody knew that. Right. Um, Um, This might be a sensitive question, but I want to ask like, now in this like kind of me too era, everybody is so being like hypersensitive about, you know, the dancer experience and things that you mm-hmm. get to say to dance dancers. Like it sounds like you had a positive experience with Peter and felt like he supported you through this difficult journey. Like, oh yeah. What, full, would, what would you say about truth? He was nothing but lovely to me the entire time I was there. Um, he was incredibly supportive he was, he never, even if he had something harsh to say to me, it was in a way that was like, let's talk about this. Right. Like not um, wanting to crush your spirit. Right. Right. And the other thing I liked about him is that he never, at least in my experience, he never lied. You always knew where you stood. Right. Which like, is a hard thing to do as a director. Very. Because yeah. you don't always get to give great information. There's this yeah. level of standard mm-hmm. and not everyone gets to have their dreams fulfilled. Mm-hmm. It's hard. And that's so I would not want that job. Like I cannot right. imagine having that job. Right. And having to deal with casting. And I mean, it's just, no, um, no, he was wonderful. That's was great. Wonderful. That's great. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so then YouTube, how did this start transitioning? Like, what was your aim now? Like, so you're, you're, you left New York city ballet and are you thinking I'm done dancing? Like maybe I'll teach. What were your, mm-hmm. what were your initial thoughts? For a little while, I thought, well, I'll dance again. I did some gigs here and there, like my home ballet school, Mobile Ballet in Alabama, always does these big shows every year. And I did Swan Lake and I did uh, Nutcracker. I was still performing, 
but just not at the level that I was used to. So were you living down in Alabama or were you in New York? I went, yeah, I went back to Alabama. That's nice. My parents are. Yeah. Cause I needed that. I think I just needed to get out of that environment too, because right. the last couple of years were just so bad. Right. And it's um, like a very, like you can't walk on the street in New York without seeing, mm-mm. you know, other <laughs> dancers and you can't have any privacy. Nope. <laughs> yeah. Um, so were you, you're originally from Alabama and mm-hmm. you trained in Mobile at, at what yeah. school? Mobile Ballet. And then you yeah. went to SAB at what age? 15. Well, uh-huh. I turned 15, yeah, 15 for that summer. And then I turned 16 the first year I was there. Uh huh. So. And then got into the company at 17. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I had a similar yeah. experience. Yeah. Yeah. I did two years at the school. So, so. So your parents moved up with you when you went to SAB? My mom did. My dad would commute on weekends when he could because wow. I'm an only child. So that's wow. how we could make that work. <laughs> because that's incredible. There was, yeah, it was amazing. Um, and my, cause my mom was like, Nope, I'm sorry. You're not, you're not moving up by yourself. You're 15. There's no way. Right. Um, so you guys, right. Which is where I think Skylar Brandt lives now. Um, does she? I, I didn't know that. Yeah. I think she oh, does. How funny. I think she does. You probably, <laughs> you might have to cut that out. She doesn't want people to know that, but, um, <laughs> cause I've seen, I saw her walk out of there one day and I was like, Oh, I used to live there. Um, That's funny. but yes, yeah, she, she moved up with me and it was the best thing because I, I was very, a very naive 15, 16 year old. Like I was not, I was a late developer in uh-huh. many areas. Uh-huh. So I was still basically like 12. Uh-huh. Um, so I needed her. Yeah. I needed her. That's great mm-hmm. that you could have that. So mm-hmm. then, so then when you left, you guys got rid of that apartment and moved, moved back to Alabama together. Yeah. Yeah. And I lived them for a few years with them for a few years. And then I actually went back up to New York for a while and then left New York. So I was kind of moving around because I got married during that time. So, um, but I was with them for the first couple of years, which I needed yeah. because I was so broken because my identity, I mean, our identity is a dancer and that was gone. Right. Totally. So, so you have these YouTube videos and, and what was your day like? What were you like? What am I going to, were you like, what am I going to do? Or did you feel just like, I just, I'm taking this time. I'm not judging it. And I don't know where I'm going and we're just going to. Yeah. That was basically it for a little while because, um, thankfully I had saved a lot while I was at city ballet. So I kind of lived off of my savings for a while. My parents helped out for a period of time. My dad was like, okay, I'm helping you for this amount of time. And then you're on your own. More power to him. That's right. what he needs. That's, that's what that's needs great. to happen. Um, but yeah, for a little while. And then I started making a schedule and then I would still like do my own bar, but not with no pressure. Just was more of just to stay in shape for the videos, you uh-huh. know, to at least right. demonstrate somewhat correct technique. Um, but no, it was, I, I made my own schedule and then I started teaching, which I swore I would never do. I'm never going to teach. No, no, no. Started teaching, fell in love with it. Um, and then through that, through the YouTube, different projects appeared, like my Dance Spirit column or YAGP or this and that. So then I was able to sort of make a, a living off of all of these Little things. Gigs. Right. Yeah. Was it yeah. hard to stay in the industry when you felt like you, at that t- moment in time, you felt like it, you weren't getting to be in a company dancing? Was that hard? Yeah, that was hard. I couldn't watch ballet for a very long right. time. Right. I would feel. I just wanted to be up there. I would feel that way. Like mm-hmm. it wouldn't be enough for me to just leave New York. I would be like, I don't want to go watch anyone do this. Yeah. You know. So that's like that takes a whole different level level of, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That was rough. That was the hard part. But then I think when I started developing this passion for helping the younger generation, then it was like that became the focus instead of, oh, I don't have to be the one that's perfect. I can help them. <laughs> that helped me a lot. I think, that's great. We had, you know, we, we put so much pressure on ourselves. Finally, I didn't have that. That's what I think helped me heal. Right. And, so. and you have these like, once you've been through a struggle in this industry, you feel like, wow, I could... I could help people avoid Mm -hmm. this feeling that I'm having or, you know, just to know that maybe it doesn't have to be that bad or Mm -hmm. the insight. It's like, then it just, I I lived it. So let me help you. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) I feel the same way. Yeah. So how did you kind of start to have the spark to like get, find a company again? Like, well, it was, I, I had sworn off dancing. I even said on YouTube, like it was right before I got married. I was like, I'm done. I, you know, I'm going to focus on the YouTube. I just want you all to know this is not happening anymore. Blah, the whole thing. Then after 10 months, my marriage completely fell apart. Horrible. Um, just devastating. And I, to heal, I went, got back in the studio. That's great. And I feel I we have similar, similar scenarios. Have, so I'm with yes. you, girl. 
yep. <laughs> Basically, this guy, yeah. Um, so, as we know. Um, and it was, and you feel like for all the crap that I had gone through with the, with the body and the health at City Ballet was nothing compared to that. Right. Because then you feel like, how didn't I see this? Why, why was I blind? Like, right. what did I do wrong? Right. Um, so that sent me down a spiral for a little bit. It was the worst week of my life. But then I started get back, getting back in the studio just for me. Good. Like no intention of any dancing professionally. Just like at all. therapeutic movement. Yeah. And I think through that, because of the horribleness of all that, I had, did not eat for a couple of weeks just because I could not. And so my body sort of, I lost a little bit of weight. Once I started eating healthy again, I got back in the studio and I was like, this is interesting. Huh. And so I didn't really say anything because I didn't want to say, I'm going to join a company and then have it fall through. So once I had separated from my husband and was starting the divorce process, I moved back up to New York because I thought, well, I'm now by myself. I can do it, this for me. And, um, and, and a little things. bit of a new beginning, mm-hmm. which is kind, I mean, kind of an, I, I enjoyed that part for myself. Oh, yes. Like I like a clean slate and, yep. and it's kind of like this moment to be like, what do I want to try to do? And yeah, you know, I'm going to re yeah. not reinvent myself, but for me, it was this moment of, I have these things I know that I need in life and I have these other things I know that I cannot put up with. And it yep. just became very clear what I wanted to bring into my world. Exactly. That's exactly what I felt. Yeah. Um, because I realized through that, the last few months of my marriage, I'd started losing who I was just right. to try and, you know, cause I, I knew something was wrong even before I knew something was wrong. And I was trying to, I literally lost who I was as a person trying to fix it. So then I got back to me um, and just moved back to New York. I went to see Lori, our Pilates teacher, and Nancy. Wait, we should give a good shout out, Lori Hurt. Lori Hurt. Yeah. (laughs) We love you, Lori. (laughs) Um, As I would see Megan on the street and wave, you know, hi, you know. But um, yeah. And And then then you took Nancy Bielski's at Steps. Yep. And she even said to me, she was like, huh you look good. I was like, thank you. Coming from her, that's, you know, she's, I love her, but she's tough. She's tough. Yeah. She's tough. So I I thought, okay, this is interesting. She's like, you should, you should try for this. And then I ended up running into Patty Delgado at, in Nancy's class, who was a former principal with Miami. And she's like, you should contact Lourdes. I know she's looking for people. So I thought, okay. So I got to a point where I felt I was in somewhat of audition shape and I contacted her and she said, come down for a few days. And I did. And, uh, I went and took class, which was so surreal because I had not taken a company class in seven years. And there I am. That's got to be overwhelming. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And then I remembered, oh yeah, balancing technique. This, this is what this is. Like, (laughs) this is, this is tough. Haven't done this in a while. Wait, one second. I'm going to tell my parents to be quiet. (laughs) (laughs) Tell dad to quiet down. (laughs) He just came back in the house and yelled, pizza. I love it. I don't know if anyone can hear that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's what I should say. I'm at my parents' house, and this is why I don't normally live with pictures of myself all I around. Think we pl- I would love the Swan Lake pictures on the wall are just Swan stunning. Lake. What is that one? Oh, can you see that? Yeah. That's Robbie in. That's a Justin oh, Ballet. Oh, yeah. That's isn't a Justin it? Ballet increases. And then that's there's cool. Robbie and Romeo and Juliet. In Romeo. <laughs> Who was one of my Romeos, by the way? We <laughs> think we said that, but yeah. Yeah. Um, Anyway, what was I saying? Oh, oh sorry. So then I you took your first company class. I took my first company class and was so sore after my four days of auditioning. And I thought, you know, I didn't, I didn't know she, she didn't at the time know if she had any spots. <clears throat> and then six weeks later, she contacted me and offered me a soloist contract. And I just was like, I'm sorry, what? Yeah. You know, because I did think I thought, well, I am 31, but I might have to, you know, start in the course. It's been seven years, right? So, um, and then that just that happened and that was incredible. It was amazing. So yeah. How exciting. I mean like pretty unprecedented. Yes. Yes. And I knew I knew that. So that was actually a lot more pressure. I mean the first show That's true. I, a lot of people it, like wondering if that's a possible thing. Mm-hmm. You know, I just took a year off to do a Broadway show and I remember after my first big show back, Peter said, You're still a ballerina. And I was like <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm like Thank you. <laughs> You thought I wasn't going to be like I, that was just one year, you know, it's very much um, in our industry, people think Mm -hmm. that you could lose it so easily and, you know, never regain it if you step away and, and definitely it's not true. 
Yeah. I mean, it was, you have to put the work in though to come back. You have to put the work in. I will, ne- you know, and I've said this before, due to the illness that I had, I will never look like I used to, you know, when I was the twiggy little 18 year old, but, but none of us look like we no. are 18 either anymore. No. And know? we shouldn't. Yeah. We should. Yeah. Um, the problem is when that's the expectation, that's right. when the, you know what you I know. think is the disservice is that everybody's body changes in those mm-hmm. years of puberty from like 17 to 20. And yes. I feel that's a really hard time to enter a company, but that's when we're all getting our jobs. Mm-hmm. And so they hire you at one age and they, you don't even know yet what your final shape is going to be. Yeah. <laughs> My mom yeah, just no. tripped over. <laughs> this is a, a hysterical interview. Are you okay? <laughs> Um, oh, candid. Th- this um, happens no, all the so time. No, it's so true. It's so true because you're not going to, you know, you're not going to look like you did at 17. Yeah. And some of us are developed later and this and that. I exactly. Mean, you don't know how your body's going to end up. And that's this yeah. really overwhelming experience as a young dancer. You come into the studio every day and you feel like you're trying to fit into this mold and you don't mm-hmm. know where your growing is going to stop and what's normal for you. And you're, yeah. and you're over analyzing it in the mirror every day and looking at yourself next to everybody. It's, that's a real hard thing to go through getting Super, in a company oh, yeah. at 17. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Definitely yeah. hard. Yeah. So I do feel like our, our, does that, is that the age kids still getting companies nowadays or is it a little in, older? I think they're getting an older, which that's good. Yeah. I think it is good. Um, yeah. I, I mean, there's definitely, there's this trainee moment. So yeah, that's true. That, trainee, second company, all that. Yeah. yeah that is, yeah. is making the ages later. But, um, mm-hmm. I have to say that is one thing I like about New York city ballet is that, you know, if you get your apprenticeship, you know, they're pretty serious about you. There's no, yeah. you know, dangling you around as a trainee. I think, I think that can be difficult in some companies sometimes because oh yeah, it's a very, un- the, the whole trainee thing is, not super certain. No, absolutely. We and I think do they have trainees at Miami City Ballet? Uh, no, there's a professional division at the school. Okay. And those are the kids that will do like snow flowers. And they get um, they paid were going to do when they join. I don't know. I don't know if they get or it's just like an opportunity. I think it might just be an opportunity. Don't quote me on that. I don't know. Yeah. Um, because I know we also have apprentices. Uh-huh. We have a couple of apprentices, and then we also have the school kids. And so the apprentices get paid, for sure. But I think the school kids do, like, snow flowers. They were going to do the core of Don Q. Um, they did Monsters of Firebird, you know, stuff like that. So That's cool. Um, it's great but we don't have, have any, we don't have any trainees. Great to have performing opportunities when you're in a, mm-hmm. a school program. So you must have known a lot of Miami City Ballet dancers, because a lot of them are from mm-hmm. SAB over the years. I knew it. T- I walked in the first day, and I was like, yep, I know half of you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. It is people the- I was in the school with, people I was, you know, like I think Alex Peters was in the school when right. I was doing Aurora. He was one of my like supers in the back. <laughs> he was like, cute. I was a super. That is so cute. cute. So now cute. he's a principal. So Amazing. it was like, yeah, and Lauren Fadley. I mean, you know, just like yeah. these people. So. That's incredible. So, yeah. how I know that Miami's not with AGMA. They don't have mm-hmm. a union. How, mm-hmm. what, what other differences did you notice? Because I know the schedule is really, really different between New York City Ballet and Miami. And how did you, yeah. were, at first, were you kind of amazed or what was, what was shocked you at first? The biggest thing is the amount of rehearsal time. Like, I feel like at City Ballet, some days you had like two rehearsals. Like, like okay, here's the tape, do it, you're on. Because the rep is so big. I mean, what, was it 45 ballets a season or something? Sometimes. Um, in Miami, the program is set. So program one is like three ballets. And so you'll, you'll do those three ballets for however long. And then um, same with the next few programs. But the other weird thing is at the start of the season, we learned all the rep for the whole season. So from like July to October, you learn everything. For the whole and year? For the whole year. Oh, wow. We learned all of it. Unless some weird thing, a stager couldn't come in. Like we learned Stravinsky violin like at the last second because um, whoever was staging it, Colleen couldn't come or whatever. But usually you learn all of the rep to start and then you perform it. But for me, the biggest thing was the amount of rehearsal time. Like we had so many run throughs. What if something's going in like March and like, so, and you learned it in this July, October period, when do you bring it back again to start putting it together? 
Well, for like Don Q, which was going to be our our last program in starting in March, we started it in July and we did it for a little bit, and then they would bring it back if they had a week off of no stager coming in, which is the other thing. Typically at City Ballet, everything was staged in house because all Valentine Trust people are there. Right. But here, like you'd have somebody come in for each thing. Like Christine Redpath came to set. Um, I'm old fashioned. I'm old fashioned. Yeah. Yeah. So it was that was weird too, but. Um, then we put it away. I think we brought back Don Q in late January, early February. It's about a month and a half before we do it. Who's Don Q? Um, but is still, it? Um, it was one that was done for Miami City Ballet. Okay. It was kind of, but we shared costumes with ABT. Cool. So, yeah. So, who's beautiful. the choreographer? Um, it's just the classic Pedipa. Oh, cool. So, yeah. Oh, great. But they just kind of did their own, we did our own version. That's fun. So, yeah, I was supposed to be Mercedes. Oh. So that was so much fun. Yeah. So where, but, where, um, was, where was Miami City Ballet when the whole world shut down recently? We were about to open Don Q. We were like a week away from it. And um, how, many perf- how many weeks of performances were scheduled? Three, but we don't perform all week. We, it was like, I think, 12, to f- 12 shows, uh-huh. maybe. So you do like Thursday to Saturday or something? Typically we do Friday to Sunday. Friday to Sunday. Okay, Friday cool. to Sunday um, in different locations. Um, sometimes it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, sometimes it's Friday to Saturday and Sunday, and then in one location, it's just the weekend. So it just varied, but we were about a week away from it. Um, and, and and give everyone a sense of how big is Miami city ballet? Like how many casts do they put on in 12 shows? Um, for, we were going to do three, three casts. So everyone gets four shows. Pretty much sometimes first cast, I think actually first cast gets about five. And third cast gets three is what ends up being. First cast is kind of a big deal in Mm -hmm. Miami City Valley. Um, So they'll get like of the four, the four show weekend, they'll get two of them. Mm -hmm. And then the second and third cast will each get one. Mm -hmm. Um, And then for us, it was bizarre because we were the first weekend we had four shows. There were going to be three casts of Keytree and Basilio and two casts of Mercedes and Espada. So somehow that sometimes happens mm-hmm. too. You'll get two casts of one thing and three casts of another. So without uh, a union, like when do you guys get notified you're casting? When do you get your schedule? Because at New York City Ballet, now we get, since you've been gone, we get our schedule two days before. Oh, our, that's our, nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> used to be just one. Um, yeah. And then we get the performance schedule still just two weeks before that that's week us. of shows. That's what you get. Yeah. Oh, wow. Interesting. Get. Yeah. But you I have a good we, idea because you've been rehearsing the whole year before. Right. You have a pretty good idea. And right. especially they rehearse you in your cast order, too, typically. Like the first day of rehearsal, you know who you're paired with. And then they'll call it out in order. Interesting. As they okay. Think they're so you have a good it. idea. You have a good idea. You're not, I mean, you don't know exactly what sh- the dates and the shows you're going to get. Um, because that can always change. Sometimes it's one, two, three. Sometimes it's one, three, two, one, something. You know what I mean? In terms right, right, of right. cast layout. Orders. But you have a good idea. Um, but. We get two weeks casting notice, and then our schedule two to three days in advance. Uh-huh. Um, our our contract, they've tried to model it after the Agnet Ag- contract and, and City Ballet. So yeah, tell me, very tell me about. I mean, is it nerve wracking to be in a company that doesn't have a union, or you feel safe because there is a contract? It's just not with all of these other companies. Yeah, we everybody seems okay. We still have dancer reps. Okay. Um, they're still very, they, so there's still you know, some order to it. Yeah, it's not there's just this chaos still, that the director does no, whatever they want. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's good. No, they've got it together. Do you know historically okay. why they are not part of the union? I have no idea. I think, I think it might've been under Eddie and, and uh-huh. when Eddie Villalba was the director. I have no idea. Uh-huh. How is so, it when, um, stagers come back that, you know, from New York city ballet? It was so bizarre, especially Christine. Like, just, I mean, because I loved her, and she taught me several things, and then just to have her come back, it was like, you know, riding a bike. I was like, oh, yeah, okay, you know. Um, probably kind of surreal, though, to be in, like, a different very. location with this person that you haven't seen in probably almost, like, nine years, like, or worked with in that yeah. setting. That's just fun. Yeah, like, it was fun. It was fun, and that's such a great ballet, too. I mean, it's so easy and, and fun. Another ballet I did with Robbie. We were in the core, though. We were the run-on couple in the back. <laughs> There's always that run-on in a Jerry ballet. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That was me and Robbie. Um, but, no, it was it was great. And then, you know, Michael Breeden came to set Justin's rodeo, oh, which so I cool. wasn't involved with. But, you know, I was at SAB with him. So it was, yeah. I mean, the ballet world is very small. It is small. It's very small. Especially the balancing small. companies. So. And it, you were recently on the Today Show. How did that all come about? 
they contacted me and they said, we heard about your, you know, your return and your illness and what you went through, what you stand for. We'd love to do a story on you. So I had an initial phone conversation with them to tell them my story, sent the photos, the whole thing. And then they decided to do the on-air segment. And so they came down and filmed and then I went there and it was, it was surreal. I walked in and they were like, oh, you're going to be with Al Roker and Craig Melvin and Natalie Morales. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Just, That's and it amazing. was so quick. I've been, I've been on that set before when I did Broadway. We were there for On the Town. And, oh, yeah, that's right. And we did. We were there twice because we got, like, rained out one time, so they brought just some of us into the studio to do a little bit, and then we mm. were back to do something on the plaza and, and be there with our whole cast. Okay. But I saw everyone, and I, I watch it every day, so I'm like, so yeah, it's so, I mean, and they're so, they're so chill too. Like they're not stressed because they do this all the time. They, up until like three, two, one, they're just chatting away. And I'm like, what are we I doing? Know, it's you know, very, they're very so, casual. And, yeah. And there's people coming in and out of the camera shots. Like you don't really mm-hmm. know as a dancer, we're used to front and then right. the wings. And this is very much like this. It was like one here, one here, one here, one here. Yeah. You're like, it's, it's a, where do I look? Yeah. You have yeah. no idea what you're doing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. How but I was though. just thrilled to be on there and to tell my story. That's and to, great. You know, that is great. Yeah. And you got great feedback from a lot of young dancers. I did. I did. Because we, you know, ballet dancers are not actors or football players. Or, we don't get a lot of attention. So right. it was nice to Nor get... do we get paid the same. No. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> so what, what were some of these messages you got from young dancers? And which ones, like, did it shock you, the, the reaction yeah. you got from people? Yeah, because the, big, the biggest thing I talk about was body image. And, you know, recently I was I was taken out of Firebird for not being in shape enough. And it was frustrating. And so I, I felt like, you know what, I'm going to talk about this because this is the illness I have and this is what I this is the platform for me. And the amount of stories I hear from these young kids who are like, I was 12 and told to do diet and I'm 13 and I'm like eating egg whites and lettuce. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is not OK. So the amount of stories that people opened up with and shared, and I've never said this before, but I had an eating disorder and now I'm 45 and I still deal with it. I mean, it was just like, oh my gosh, it broke my heart really. But, um, and then I got a lot of great feedback too from people who have Hashimoto saying, thank you for talking about it. People think we're making this up, you know, so uh, the feedback was extraordinary. How do you um, deal with the mental relationship with food when you feel like you have this disorder do you did you have to go through a period of time where you were like trying to get rid of those bad thoughts oh 100 percent. because when I left the company right when um I was doing Hermia and the whole thing in midsummer I was barely eating trying to get my weight down and I, I literally was eating nothing and I was gaining weight and so it was like this thing of really a nightmare you know, it was a hard it was horrible and I, so when I, the first year I was out of the company, I let myself eat whatever I wanted, whenever I wanted it, just to kind of get back to some sort of normalcy and put no restrictions on myself, put no rules in place. And that kind of re rewired me in terms of food. And so now I don't, you know, I still think about it because you know, the things like with the firebird thing or recently with everybody trying saying, you gotta be like this big. Um, that sort of started to send me down that spiral again. And I was like, nope, not going there. So this time I was able to catch myself cool. and sort of back it back. But, you know, when I was younger, it was it was a nightmare. And at this point in your life, you kind of know what is a healthy amount for yourself. It's yes. different when you're young. You still you have no idea. hard to learn how to feed yourself for the first couple of years. Yeah. You're yeah. out of your parents' house or... I mean, like I, I, was, I remember like Googling like so-and-so diet and like trying to read about what this dance rate or what this dance rate, you know, and it's just like, <laughs> you got to figure out what works for you. You know, right. I'm at 31, now I know what works for me, but right. um, when you're younger, you don't have a clue. It's hard at first. Clue. It definitely is hard yeah. at first. Yeah. So, so can we talk about your um, boyfriend? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> You're, yeah. you're dating a ballet West dancer. <laughs> yes, I am. He just retired. In, oh, he just in, retired. Um, he just retired. Yeah, with Nutcracker. Oh, okay. Um, Prodigal Son was his last. His name is Christopher Sellers. For those of you who don't know, um, he's he was a first soloist with Ballet West, and he Prodigal was like his big last ballet. But then they were like, "Oh, we need you for Nutcracker." <laughs> so technically, oh, weird. <laughs> yeah, weird. Nutcracker was his his last big thing, and he wanted to do it, and he was fantastic, and you know, he did like almost every show, but. Um, 
we met actually during judging YGP. That's how we met. Um, and I was married at the time when we met. So we were just friends for a really long time, you know, because I behaved. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Thank you very much. So we were just friends for a very, very long time. And then I was going through d- the divorce when I was teaching for his parents over the summer because his parents have a huge ballet school in, in California. And so we he was kind of like the friend through that. And then we judged again together. So it was just kind of like a really solid friendship that, mm-hmm. that then turned into more. So we started dating officially almost a year ago now. So oh, cool. Yeah. Long distance from Florida to Salt Lake. Yep. And is yep. he, he's a choreographer too? Or he's no? Choreographer. Now he's, yes, he's now principal faculty with Ballet oh, West Oh, awesome. Canada. Yeah, so, so he's, he's one of the... He's working big, as a ballet master. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. More with, more with the trainees in the professional division, though, so he's more with the school than the company, but brilliant, brilliant teacher. I mean, I'm sitting there watching him teach like, wow, you know. Like you're, um, you're having your own little revelation. I'm like... Wow, I need to I need to steal that. <laughs> I'm going to steal it, you know. <laughs> but uh, no, and he has a huge passion for the younger kids. And I've said to him many times, I'm like, are you? Do you miss dancing? He's like, nope, I'm done. Yeah, I'm happy to be done. That's kind of so. cool that you guys share this like passion mm. for younger dancers. You're reaching out on your yeah. platforms, and and he does in his own way with his work. Yeah, that's yeah. really cool. And, um, I I also was one of those people that swore I would never date a dancer. Like I never dated a dancer the entire time I was at City Ballet, <laughs> did not, and I was which like, was never probably also smart. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and uh, then here we are. So, yeah. <laughs> but it's great because yeah. I can I can be on the phone with him saying that that happened in rehearsal, and he knows exactly what I'm talking about. Right, right, which is nice. Right, so that's yeah. amazing. I'm so happy for you. You deserve it. Yeah. Thank you. So, what do you what do you see for your future? What are you, what are your hopes in terms well, of of yeah. your platform and, and what you want My to do with that. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to, to be perfectly honest with you, I don't, I don't see myself staying in Miami. Um, I, great, wonderful, beautiful company, amazing rep, but I have now this huge, long passion, huge passion for the platform that I, that I have. I'm happy at this point in my life dancing in any capacity. I don't care where it is, how it, you know, I just want to dance. That's I'm a not, freeing place to be at. Oh my gosh, it's so freeing. Because I, when I was little, I was like, I have to be a principal with New York City Ballet, you know, and it's just that, you know. Um, and it might have happened, it might not have happened, but when you're little, you put all your eggs in one basket. Now I'm like, if I can just be on a stage somewhere, I don't care where it is, how it is. So, um, you know, and Chris and I want to be together. And so it's, I, but I'm so passionate now about these younger kids. And I think that's what I missed this year while I was in Miami, mm-hmm. is that like, I missed that. I missed doing the YouTube. Now that I'm back doing it again with this whole crazy thing, I'm like, oh, yeah, I miss this. I miss the teaching. I miss the judging. I miss the giving back because it is a very selfish career. It is, um, isn't it? Now I have to figure out how to balance both. Yeah. So, That's a good task. Yeah, because yeah, I was I, the one YAGP I judged this year, I was like, oh, I've missed this, you know? Yeah. yeah. So How was it judging think- YAGP? I want to know. What's the experience it is. like? <laughs> I love it. I mean, first of all, it will always be special to me because that's how we met. But we did I you love do YGP as a as a student? Ooh. I didn't know. I was not allowed to. I I mean, I think SAB didn't allow. And when I was little, it was just starting. Now it's this whole big thing, right? Um, everybody was like, "What's that?" Um, but I contacted them several years ago, and I was like, "I'm interested in judging." They were like, "Great, sign." You know, I did five cities my first year. So amazing! That's so fun. It's really challenging. Because you're constantly doing this, uh-huh. so you miss half, right? And then when like something like Bluebird comes out, you're like, I have thirty seconds. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, okay. And then with these little kids, it's mostly Bluebird and Fairy Doll and, and these short solos. And then you want to be in that short amount of time. You have to be both critical and constructive. So you have to like, right. you know, fill a sheet. But I love it. I love teaching the master classes. I love seeing all those kids, you know, because they just work so hard for it. Maybe, maybe the kids that do IAGP know this, but I'm curious to know, how do they judge it? Is it on the point system? Mm-hmm. It's on a point system out of 100. Out of 100. And, 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 and you're just, you can knock off for any certain amount of things that you think? Or are there certain things yeah. like if they didn't do one of these categories or are there certain you know, what is it? Is it like, is it like ice skating? <laughs> like artistic and technical? Yes. There's a, there's a, it's 50% artistry, 50% technique. 
Okay. And so under the technique, they have these little blanks where you can either put a check mark or next next to like footwork turnout. Okay. Know, and then artistry is presentation, musicality, you know, those things. Cool. And then you give each each you give an artistry score and a technique score both out of a hundred, and then they average them. And then they average all four judges. So technically, your score, the kid's score, is the average of eight scores. Do you ever see someone like not getting onto the final podium or whatever at the end that you really felt strongly about? But yeah, and and that's what it is. Sometimes I will love somebody and I'll get the other score sheets and I'm like, oh, they didn't like that person. And then there's no. <laughs> so really, it, whoever wins has to be liked by all the judges. Right. Right. And that's what's true. So because wh- I value artistry over technique. I'll do it all the time. So, you know, what, what would you say to these young dancers? Cause in my mind doing something like I did dance competitions, but I did like jazz and tap mm-hmm. slash ballet competitions. Like I think that YGP sounds incredibly stressful because ballet is already so, yeah. you know, you have to be so perfect and it's so intense. So this is the way a lot of kids are getting jobs these days is to go yeah. through this. What advice would you give to kids um, about how to get through uh, have, having been on the judge's side? What mm-hmm. would you say to these young kids to help them succeed in that environment? I think they have to approach it in a way of this is a performance opportunity and this is a way to be seen, not about the score or winning because there's only going to be one winner. Right. And if you go into it with I have to do well, I have to – be perfect it's going to be horrible right but if you go into this as this is an opportunity for me to do a solo this is an opportunity for literally looking at these judges I mean I'm sitting next to like the head of Houston Ballet School on my left the head of you know whatever ballet school on my right I'm like what an opportunity yeah for the kids um who and all these people not me but all these people can offer scholarships right so you know you might get a summer intensive scholarship you might get a job you might get a year round scholarship so that's how i would approach it i would not approach it in terms of medals uh huh because it, then you will be miserable because only one person wins plus i think that's a really great thing to be focusing on when you're that age is just performance opportunities and getting mm-hmm. out on a stage and and performing as much as possible because yeah. i think the sooner you get used to that feeling of okay i'm leaving the wing and I'm going to try mm. to do this and my best, t- you know, yeah. the best I've ever done it for all of these people. Like the more you get used to that at an earlier age, I think that's really helpful in the career. Oh yeah. Cause I remember, you know, those of us who did have performance experience as a young child, when we got into the company at 17, we were ready for it. You know, there were a couple of people I got in with who never had that much performance experience. And it was like deer in headlights, like, oh my gosh, I'm in symphony and C and I don't know what to do. I mean, you know, it's just like, and at City Ballet, it's really sink or swim. It is. You know, you can't like dilly dally, like you've got to show you can do it. Right. So I think it's huge. I think that's huge. Yeah. So that's a cool way to look at that. Cause I always think of YGP as, my God, that must just be so stressful for these young kids. I mean, I bet you're sitting there as a judge. Warm up, you get 15 minutes for the, with the ent- everybody in your category. So literally 15 minutes on stage is like 50 girls in tutus trying to do a pirouette. And, you know, like, and I'm just like, I would have crumbled. So are you guys that. watching the warm up? You watch? No, we don't watch warm up. Oh, okay. But I've passed by before. Because actually, before I was a judge, I had a student compete. And thankfully, she was mentally tough. She was kind of like, yeah, whatever, I can do this. I would have been like, yeah, ah. me, me too. Oh my gosh. No, no way. It mm-hmm. sounds like the ice skating, com- mm-hmm. you know, competitions, oh, yeah. but like 10 times worse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cause That's you have crazy. like however many, I mean, it was, it's, it's crazy. And then you have that minute, you know, solos are a minute to two minutes to impress. And if you're on, you're on, if you're off, you're off. Okay. So last, it's... last question. Mm-hmm. Um, in these Corona times, what, mm-hmm. what's your advice to people to, you, you've had to deal with making your own schedule at one point mm-hmm. in time for the day. Like what, it, and, and also like self-disciplining to stay in shape. Like what would you, what advice would you give? It could be like, you know, this many hours a day, you got to do something or how do you, how do you do that for yourself? I think for me, you know, what I've been telling people is I'm the girl that took nine years off essentially. So I think the big, the biggest worry is that everybody's worried they're going to lose everything. Right. Within what has it been three weeks already? It's gonna right. you know several months. I think as long as you do something every day, right, you're gonna be fine. And everybody's in the same boat, right? 
So we're all going to go back to our companies. We're all going to go back to our classes or whomever you are watching. And everybody will have been in, you know, in the same situation. Right. So the teacher will understand that we've got to build back up. So I think as long as you do something and st- again, stop worrying about being perfect, that's going to help you. And then you'll get back fast. Um, oh. It's trying to overdo it. You know, you don't also don't want to come back with an injury. <laughs> that's from- exactly what I've been thinking. Just coming back healthy and maintaining a certain amount. Yeah. 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 You could totally get injured dancing at home if you overdid it. Mm -hmm. No one should be doing point work on a hardwood floor. Let's just put that out there. (laughs) Thank you, Megan. (laughs) No, don't do pirouettes in your point shoes on tile or wood or, you know, (laughs) no, no. (laughs) Yeah. So for you, you're not really freaking out about it. You're taking a little time to just enjoy. I'm taking a little time, yeah, to enjoy. And I'm trying to, I am trying to crank out the YouTube videos because this is now when my channel has, after five years of doing this, it's finally exploding because now I have 350 plus videos. Um, But that's my main focus and I'm still, you know, I'm able to monetize mine. So that's my source of income right now. That's amazing. So that's, that's been huge for me, but no, I'm taking a little time off and letting things heal. Cause I'd had some Achilles issues by the end of the season. And I was me just too. like, Ugh. yeah, yeah. balance jumping. I know. <laughs> I know. And yeah. you know, age. <laughs> yeah, that too. I forget, you know, cause that was the other thing I left when I was 23. Now I'm 31. Yeah. So it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, but. you're amazing, Katie. Thank you so much for <laughs> you Megan joining me in this way and I'm so proud of you you've really like yeah you have a great like great spirit you know to to keep thriving in in a difficult time so you're a great example to everyone out there thank you so much so good to talk to you thank you so good to talk to you stay safe you too you too bye